I'm going to show you this Chapman stick. This is a very strange instrument. So I guess many people have a, probably even heard, not even heard about it, but it's a, it's a tapping instrument. It's like a giant fretboard, this. And uh, you can play it standing up or sitting down, but now I'm, I'm, there's like this little belt hook here. So I, I don't have, even have a belt, but I put it in my pants like so. But uh, when I sit down, I use this little wooden piece. I put it like so, and then I can have it between my, my knees, uh, between my legs. And then I just sit down and play, which is actually a very comfortable position. So ergonomically, this is a great, great instrument. You get very, very nice, comfortable, relaxed playing style, but a better view when I'm standing here. So now it's got 10 strings. The frets are, look at this, they're like triangles. <laughs> so they don't look like guitar frets. And that's because I think the luthier, Mr. Chapman himself, did some experiments and figured out that this gives a really good tapping tone, and, and it does. Tapping on this one is effortless. You, you need almost no, no, no force at all to... And you've got great sustain. I mean, you can't really do this with a guitar unless you give it a completely different setup and tweak it a lot with string height. The string height is, it, it's ridiculously low. Let's see if we can pick it up here even. It's, I mean, it's like zero string height, which is one of the reasons that it's so, so easy to tap. If you had a guitar with this string height, I think it would be unplayable. <laughs> and then if you, if you try to play tapping on the guitar, you know this when you, when you tap and you release the strings, the open string is going to give a lot of sound, which is a problem, of course. But they sold it with this Chapman stick, so you got... It's like, it's like Velcro up here. And on the melody strings, it's even on two bands. So you, you don't really... you don't play open strings on this one. So the, 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 the reason that you have the Velcro here is that when you... And then when you release, it goes silent. And this does not happen on a guitar, because if you do it on a guitar, you would have to use your hand and mute it, but the stick mutes itself. And uh, what else do we have? It's, it's, it's quite a long neck. I don't remember if it's 34 or 36 inch, you can Google it. Because uh, this is a, it's a, it's a 10 string model, which is like the, the basic model it's like a four string violin or a six string guitar uh, then and then it's the 10 string chapman stick so i thought that that's probably a good place to start with any instrument start with the most basic model because because then there's tutorials around and you can learn stuff but now, now i'm just laughing about myself because that's a complete paradox with a stick this instrument is so rare that uh, <laughs> you you can't find that much information on it compared to if you want to learn guitar or the drums or whatever other instrument you get tons of content but with this one there's there's not much content available in comparison and uh, so you, you basically have to figure out a lot of things by yourself which is also the beauty of it because there's it's not like you got standard tuning on a guitar with uh, from low to high E string I mean that that's uh, Everybody knows that, but with a with a Chapman stick, you got a lot more flexibility. You can, I've seen guys tune this way, tune tune this one, in uh, many many different ways according to what you pre prefer. But I think uh, m mine is tuned in standard Chapman stick tuning. I, I don't remember what it's called, but uh, it's a standard tuning. And the only exception here is that I got an extra string here. So it's like baritone standard tuning or something it's called. So in, in, in a basic bog standard Chapman stick, you would have precisely this tuning, but with an additional, this one would jump one string down and the, the thickest one would be replaced by an, a thin one here instead. Yeah. That's, why, that's what I think at least, because I haven't looked that much into it. I just bought this one. It's a secondhand stick. So, uh, and that it was tuned this way when I got it, and I haven't really bothered. I, I checked Chapman's ha uh, site about the tunings, and that's what I figured out. So this is like standard with, with an extra thick string here. And uh, then you have, it's 
quite similar to piano, the way you play. You got the rhythm part on your left hand and you got the melodies on your right hand. That's how you play the piano too. And with this one, you've got these five strings, which are the bass strings. And those you take care of with your left hand. And then you have the melody strings here, which you take care of with your right. And you can do crisscross patterns or strange chords if you want to, but the, the basic concept is that you do the melodies with this one and the, and the rhythms with this one. And then uh, it's tuned, this melody part, it's very similar to a guitar or a bass. It's uh, the, the same interval, so it's just... Oh. So you're gonna recognize m m most of the scales. So you, you at least, you, your mind is gonna take some getting used to before you can, before you can find your way around in the same way as you can on a guitar or a bass. But, but this one, it's pretty much the same. Here it gets a somewhat more complicated on the bass side because this one is tuned inverted with a thick string in the middle and then it gets thinner towards you. And it's not tuned, in, it's like in inverted, uh, what's it called? Quintar in Swedish. But the interval is, is the same as on a violin but reversed. So it's like. I'm really lousy at music theory. I don't have any schooling. I just play by ear. So I don't know about theory. I, I always found, found it too boring. So I just started playing instead. So maybe that's... Maybe I would be a benefit if I learned some more theory because I, I don't really know much about that stuff. But I know that if you tune a violin like, like this, but you flip it. So... And the reason is because I guess you, you get uh, quite nice ergonomic uh, finger positions to do nice chords. And another cool benefit when you do the inverted violin tuning is that many of the patterns still are the same. So if I, if I take like a metal chord, you know this one's, it looks exactly the same, even though the, the tuning is... And that's pretty cool. So when you do a scale, it's the same position, but it jumps up and down in the octave. So if you listen closely, it's like... <laughs> but, but every time you change string, you go up and up octave. But it provides a nice way of doing chords, and they look like this then. So you take... I don't know if we can see, maybe if, if there are any rookie stick players you might find this useful <laughs> there you have the major and then you do like this move this one down one fret do you get the minor and with these two you can do quite a lot you can also add this one perhaps which is also a nice chord <laughs> it's like the three chords that i use basically and and you can get through just about any song with these three, at least, uh, you know, the, the, those four chords where you can create, there's videos with that, all the hit songs are basically based on the same four chords. And once you find that pattern on the stick, you can, you can uh, start playing. So. gets also a lot more complicated because we have only talked about the instrument now but how, then how you process it you got you got like here it's a separate output so you can process the bass and melody strings independently of each other so it's a stereo plug here and this one goes into an i oh, sorry about that oh it goes into a, a y cable so i got an acoustic fishman amplifier with two channels and uh, then I can process them a bit differently. So I got a pretty, dr a little bit of reverb, but it's basically pretty clean here. On the bass side. Because bass with reverb, it's, uh, I don't find it 
pretty, it, it's not that nice, I think. I prefer to keep it dry. And then I have quite a lot of reverb on the melody side. Because it sounds nice. And then I also do, yeah, and then you have here tons of microphone configurations. You got two microphones here and then you can do with a guitar like you do uh, one of them, both of them, phase inverted and uh, everything. So you can get quite a lot of combinations on this one. I don't want to go and fiddle about with it because I've found a setting now that I really like and I don't want to <laughs> know if I can remember how I got back to it. So <laughs> let's keep it that way. Many knobs and stuff where you can change the tone and character. It, it's quite an advanced preamp this. And uh, then there's also the cool part here. It's got a MIDI uh, system too. So it's the Roland, the modified Roland system with a GK pickup here. So you can see on the melody side, you got five independent pickups. So, and, and with this ones, I run through a Roland guitar synthesizer. And here's the cool thing with these, that I actually add a synth pad in the background. Let's see if we can hear it. I remove the cable once again. Now we only have the synth. So listen if we got... Hopefully the microphone will pick this up because you've, you've got a really slow... Slow attack synth pad that comes in in the background. And let's see if I can just increase the volume a little, little bit so we can hear this. Oh, now we got a lot of. I hope. Yeah, this works. Now we can see here. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I don't. I don't really like to play with this synth side, because then I use a piano or a keyboard. I mean, there's no point to make it more complicated. But but as an effect, I, I, I use this one a little, in the same way as a reverb, because when you, when you take the string and you tap it, you get an attack, so it's like bum, and then the sustain dies out slowly. But then you got this slow attack pad that's like, uh, and it grows instead. And then when these two overlap, you get a tone that re that's... Uh, a the attack com comes from the, the acoustic sound of the string, amplified of course, and then it's layered with the, with the pad that is fading up. And I, I think it makes a really cool effect. So you, can you get a great, a great, great tone here. So let's get it back again. Nope. Reconnect the cable. Okay, like so, and there we have it. So if we just go with the tone again, I don't know if you can hear it in the mic, but it's I find it really pleasurable to, to use it that way. So it's it's quite a complicated setup. I've uh, played this one, I think it was for for a year. 15 minutes every day and I still haven't got it to a le to the level that I can just play like you know campsite fire uh, acoustic guitar just jam on, on songs I'm not really there yet even though I practiced every day for a year it's so difficult I think this this is the most difficult instrument I've ever played it's exceptionally unforgiving if you make a single mistakes it sounds horrible here are the two typical mistakes that happens you tap a little bit too hard so it slides off the fretboard. And this is not a nice sound. So you have to be really careful with that. And the second one is that you, you mix up the minor and the major patterns. So if you pull a ma minor chord where it's supposed to be a major, it's so, it also it hurts my ears. It's pain. <laughs> it sounds so bad. So high risk, high reward. You can easily say that. But when you get it right, it's like one of the most beautiful instruments out there. But it takes a lot of patience and a lot of practice to, to, to get it right. But it's, uh, 
It's the most unforgiving instrument I've tried and it's also the most rewarding instrument because it's such a nice feel when you can uh, let's uh, yeah well, let's end this video and uh, play a little song in the end and you can listen to how it sounds. <laughs> I really messed it up already. I got some more videos on my channel. You can go check them out when I play a little bit better now. So I wasn't. Uh, I'm not used to standing up. I always play sitting down. And now my camera angle is completely wrong. So, anyways, I hope you learned some stuff from this video and uh, ask me some questions. I love to answer them because uh, there's probably lots of questions to be asked about this very, very strange instrument. <laughs> so, see you later.